again. We're back one more time. Last chapter of the night, Mark chapter three. Got the whole squad here. Y'all better be that loud when y'all giving y'all answers and y'all questions. All right. So the last chapter of Mark is what I want you guys to do as I read this word. All right. Last chapter of Mark, we learned to open our mind, just like the friends of the one sick with the palsy tore the roof off the building that Jesus was in, right? Because Jesus is in us, right? And he said to open our minds, right? And he wanted us to know our power and authority, the power and authority that we have by faith in him, right? All the things that he did for us. He said he's Lord of the Sabbath. He showed us all throughout time that... We, we shouldn't be stuck to just law, right? Thanks for joining us again. We shouldn't be stuck to just law, but because of Christ, we're free to follow the law. She could go to bed. She could go to bed. Good night, Heavenly. Get out. Good night. Go to bed. You don't make noise in my service. Yep, by yourself. All right. Life of a father. Seven boys, five girls. And shut that door, too. I don't want to hear no noise. Shut that door, too. Learn to sit down in my service. See? Remember what we learned in um, Exodus, the last chapter of Exodus, to have respect for the holy things? Have respect for the holy things. So when the word is going forth, there's a certain way that we got to come. Even down to the babies, right? Because they say even the animals, right? Mm -hmm. Even down to the animals. So if it goes as low as the animals, of course they talk about kids. Remember Jonah and Nineveh? All, all the man, woman, child, and, and animals. And beasts. That's right. That's right. So, all right, guys. So, that was what happened in um, Mark chapter 2. Now, we're going to go into 3, right? Let's see what's going on. Father, uh, anybody, that's, anybody that's just coming on now, Lord God, give them a blessing. The ones that came on in the last uh, live, uh, just, just continue to bless their lives and heal their minds, their hearts, their families. In Yeshua's name, let them be transformed, Lord God. You said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Lord, that we can renew our mind today, Lord God. All the things that uh, people said against us that were not true, Lord God, we are, we are uh, uh, refuting it now. We are rebuking it now. Lord God, you are changing us for the better. You're setting us up for miracles and blessings, telling us our authority, Lord God. We just receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, it says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. So his hand was short and crippled, right? Kind of like um, that mo scary movie, right? It says, And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which ha had the withered hand, Stand forth. He didn't just say stand, but he said stand forth, mm -hmm. right? Make yourself be known. God, look, um, get you a Bible. If you don't have it, get you a Bible with the Jesus words in red. It's powerful, right? It's important, the things that he said. He, he said this to the man with the withered hand. He said stand forth, be seen, be noticed. Because usually somebody who has an issue, if you have an issue and you're going through something, God wants you to be bold in that. God wants you to say, hey, I need help. You know what I mean? So he told him, stand forth. And he saith unto him, he saith unto them, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? To save a life or to kill? Because he knew they was pressing him about, yo, why are you doing all this stuff on the Sabbath day? You're supposed to be resting. But they was taking the law literally like what we was talking about. Don't take that literally. But the spirit of the law, you, you follow Jesus. He, he, they asked him, what was the greatest commandment? He said to love the Lord, well, everything you have, and love your neighbor as yourself. Besides that, there is no law. All the other laws are hanging on those two. So the, the perfect law is the law of love, right? All right. So it says, but they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. So when I, I want you to notice something. When... People speak against you, and when people are against you, God does, he blesses you even more. He said he'll prepare a place before you in the, 
in the presence of your enemies, but you got to be in the presence of your enemies to, for the table to be prepared, for the blessing to be before you, right? I, I tell people um, a lot of times that, you know, God oftentimes put your blessings in the hands of the people you don't like. Mm-hmm. How do I know that? Because he said the riches of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, mm-hmm. right? Why does he do that? Because he wants you to have a right heart and a posture towards him and toward people that we won't be judgeful, that we will have mercy. He, he said the merciful will us obtain mercy. Amen. All right. So let, let them talk about you. Let them um, treat you wrong. Pray for them and God will bless you double for your trouble. He will give you double for your trouble. And this is what you, you see being done here. Uh, we are on Mark 3. And verse, we just finished verse, no, okay, Mark 3, verse 5. I'm going to go back to the beginning of uh, 5. Mark chapter 3, verse 5. It says, and when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, right? So that's how Jesus feel when people have hard hearts about you, right? He saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. So he didn't only give him the first blessing, tell him to stand forth, Right? Let yourself be seen and known, right? Giving him the power to, to stand, encouraging him. But then he said, stretch forth your hand. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing that he told Moses to do when he was delivering the children of uh, uh, Israel from out of Egypt into the promised land. It says, and he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. I think that's important to note because he said his hand was restored whole as the other. You know, God has people. He said, there's many sheep that I have and the sheep that are not of this fold. So a lot of people think I'm the only one that God is helping. Right. You're the only one. But God, God is helping everybody. He said the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. He causes the sun to go on the good and the evil, the rain to go on the good and the evil. You know what I mean? We're all his children. You don't know who God is working with, so you treat everybody the same way, right? With love, right? All right. It says... In verse 6, it says, And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians uh, against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Edomea, and from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him and he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude lest they should throng him. So he's trying to he's trying to get away from the people not not because he don't want to help them but because it's so many. Y'all remember the videos where Lil Bow Wow used to run away from the crowd? You know what I mean? I could just imagine that that was Jesus like, yo, <laughs> it's a lot of them. You know what I mean? If you're going around performing miracles and, and helping people, the fame of you is going to grow. You know what I mean? So he said, get a ship so I can be, be in the water so that they can stay right at the shore, you know. And he said, lest they should throng him, meaning he'll, he'll get trampled. Remember how people be having lines waiting for those Jordans, you know what I mean? They be waiting for them Black Friday sales and a lot of people be getting hurt. That's what, that's what it's talking about. I'm trying to be relatable to y'all, you know what I mean? It says, for he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. So they're looking for Jesus. It says, And unclean spirits, when they saw him, they fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Because, look, look, he was already, he, he already had a bunch of pressure. <laughs> He's like, yo, quiet down, quiet down. Right. Simmer down. But, you know, we supposed to want and and need him and acknowledge our needs so much that we still keep pressing in. Right. And he straightly charged them. He straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. So don't feel no way when somebody get blessed before you. You're you're in the area to get blessed. So celebrate with them, rejoice with them, pray for them. Your time is coming. Amen. It says, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that 
he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon, he surnamed Peter and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them uh, Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon, the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into a house and the multitude cometh together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. So that's how that's how crazy it was. You know how you get into your work and you're working so hard that you didn't even eat. Some people get on their laptops and they just be going. You know what I'm saying? But like, how much better is it you healing people, speaking life to people, making a difference? Now, if it's your business, it's something that God, um, you know, uh, told you to go forward in where you're not killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you're taking your rest. That's why he gave us Shabbat. That's why we he gave us the Holy Spirit. Right. Well, you're taking your rest, then so be it. That's good. But if you're just killing yourself with work, that's not the way God intended it. All right. It says, um, and the multitude come together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for he said he is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he have bills above, and by the prince of devils cast if he out devils. So they were getting mad at his fame. They were getting jealous. They were getting mad. Y'all yeah, know the haters come when you, when you start prospering. All right. He says, and he called them unto him, and he said to them, uh, he said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? How can Satan cast out Satan? He said, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of man and blasphemies, whether soever, wheresoever they shall blaspheme, but he that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because he said he have an unclean spirit, there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him, and the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he said he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Right? That's important to note. He wasn't paying attention. He was doing the work of, of God, our Heavenly Father, so so much so that his earthly uh, family, he said, is more important to do God's will. I'm for those who are doing God's will. It's not about the family that you were brought up in, that you were raised in, but it's about the family of God, the, the assignment that God has put you on, the destiny, the purpose that he has given you. I want to talk about the, um, the, the parables when he said, how can Satan cast out Satan? And kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Um, we got to be one in unity. We spoke about that in, um, in Exodus, in Exodus 21. We got to be in unity. If you want to walk together, he said, uh, can two walk together unless they be in agreement? That's a rhetorical question. Two can't walk together unless they be in agreement. Two shouldn't walk together unless they be in agreement. So, you know, we, we learned the example throughout Mark chapter 3, how Jesus went from one town to another, right? And how he was moving to, you know, um, when they wanted to, they wanted to kill Jesus. You always see Jesus escape into the crowd and things like that. I see a lot of people arguing with people and trying to fight with people, but 
we should be doing what Jesus did. He dipped out. Like, oh, you stay there. I see you don't, you don't want to understand. I'm going to walk away. I got other people. He said, um, if any town don't receive you, dust the dirt off your feet and go into another. Spoilers. Right? <laughs> spoilers. There's a lot of spoilers. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Be honest with God, honest with yourself, honest with others. Do what it is that God called you to do without any anybody holding you back. All right? Anybody got any questions, comments, concerns? Thank you for coming up here. Hello. Yep, that was the end. Wait, what? Lord, bless the hearers of your word, but bless even more the doers of your word, God. Thank you for your word. May people gain revelation. Deliverance, transformation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody got something to say? Um, all right, if it's all good, it's all good. You can't um, walk with someone that you don't agree with. You can't walk with someone that you don't agree with. And you can't walk with someone who doesn't agree with you. Amen. Does that mean literally walking? No. What does that mean? Like being around because you'll always cause problems. Oh, my gosh. She's smart. Oh, she said she's smart. She threw that hand up. I'm smart, too. Go for it. <laughs> um, um, well, what I heard was that that um, you you're not special. Everyone has to have get the pain and and um and she be pulling on that Holy Ghost. <laughs> She's talking to God right now, y'all. She asking God, what should I say? Yeah. Um, from the grown ups to the animals. And okay. That. Okay. I mean, it's true. It's true. Like I said, like last time, it's true. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not exactly what's in the scripture. You do your own scripture, you want to preach your own sermons. Keep on studying, keep on praying. I believe in your your gift and your anointing, and I see it. You know what I'm saying? Um, keep praying. You got to be in that word hardcore. All right? Yeah, pray for JoJo because she's going to be awesome. Go ahead. She's awesome now. Go for it. Mm-hmm. 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 You got to be fo so focused on God that you, that you don't even see the world as it is. That's right. It's powerful. Go for it, Kaka. You know my voice. <laughs> uh, let's see. I got a good word. And it's a good word, too. <laughs> if you watch me long, you know I got that from. <laughs> um... We should start speaking with power. Start speaking with power. Yes, because I'm pretty sure Jesus is not going around like, hey, stretch, stretch your hand. He's like, no, stretch your hand. Mm. <laughs> stretch that hand. To get up and walk. That's right. That bed. That's right. I don't like some people. But, <laughs> but I, I remember um, I was watching a video today about the armor of God by uh, Pastor Bruce. And um, <laughs> he, he was breaking down how to you know how 
we take on the armor of God, but a lot of times we have faith in our own faith. We have faith that we have faith. You know what I'm saying? So it can't be out of our own authority because we do have authority and we do have willpower. And a lot of people are living off of their own will, right? And their own power. And, and we have the ability to do great things and mighty things, right? But we have to make sure that we're doing it, you know, as, as God has sent us to do it. You know what I mean? And then we'll have the full power. The full power, unlimited p- power and potential from God. Because it has to connect. For instance, if a person wasn't praying to be set free, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then I don't think that the connection would be there because there's no connection. You know what I mean? There's no there's no service there. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is praying to be set free and they need, you know, help with their faith. Right. I think I believe that that's when God sends people right. to link with their faith and to you know to help them out. So I agree with what you're saying um, completely with with that. Um, I dealt with that myself. I remember seeing someone with a withered hand mm-hmm. in Staten Island, and that was in that was in Queens actually. That was in Staten Island. Okay. We was walking to the ferry, and I was walking behind you. Okay. It was in Staten Island. And um, you was in front of me, and God said through you, you first have to deal with the little problems before you can, before you can deal with the big ones. Mm-hmm. You know, so that definitely meant a lot. You know what I mean? Because you know, there's so much things that we have to overcome personally. You know. And we always want to help somebody else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like helping someone else, um, the best way to help somebody else is by helping yourself. Okay. So I feel like I'm saying for that. Not, having you know saying having a closer thing. relationship with God and, right. and having your faith on point with God. Right. And that's in, you know, knowing that you are weak and knowing that, you know, he is strongest in you when you are weak. That's what Paul said that he did. That he he gloried in his uh, imperfections, mm-hmm. you know, that the power of God may rest upon him, mm-hmm. you know, um, as as much as possible, right? right? Anybody else? How about Janai? Janai, y'all know what Janai doing? How about Janai? Y'all know what Janai doing? Janai, Janai, Janai. You want me to wake him up? Yo, hold it down. Hold it down. We at the end of the service. You said you want me to wake him up? All right. Yo, yo, yo. What did yo. you get? Mommy, mommy said, what'd you get? Yeah. Mm. I got that. Mm. Sleep is good, though. Mm. <laughs> well, I wasn't paying attention. He said, he said I wasn't paying attention. You, you was meditating, right? That was it? <laughs> oh, and also, um, that's also the reason why we speak, like when we speak, when we pray, we say in Jesus' name because that's our connection. Right. Just want to say that. He restored the access <laughs> for us. He's our advocate. I got something to say about Go for what you said. You know what was what was difficult for me for a long time? That that the scripture, that part where Jesus said, you know. Um, who is my mother, my father, but then it does the will of my father, right? Mm. For me personally, I just wanted to share, and I wanted My to mother and my share. brother, he made sure that he didn't say father. I mean, yeah, my brother, <laughs> I said brother, right? I said yeah. father? Yeah, brother. Yeah. I'm sorry. But the reason why I brought that up is because it was difficult, and I want to be honest. I know a lot of people may, may struggle with that, so I just wanted to be transparent that... That's Yo, y'all Okay. That's what I struggle with, you know. Um, learning how to learning how to um, to speak over my authorities. It's funny how in Exodus we talked about honor your, your your mother and your father, but then in Mark three you hear, you know, who is my mother? And that's really good. You know what I'm saying? Like the parallel is like, you right. know, um, it can get, it can be very tricky. Mm-hmm. But I've learned that with my journey with God, I've learned that it's how you speak and how you go about things. Right. Like you can come at a um, at a respectful manner. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
when it comes to doing things of God. Because there was plenty of times where I, God told me to do things that was against, you know, my loved one's um, mindset. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, out of, like, respect or things like that. So, you know, it was difficult for me to, to, to walk in that. Right, to have to have honor and respect, and to um, treat them gently, right, and and treat them as a father. The Bible says, "Rebuke at not an elder." That's why that's why we um that's why we're supposed to study the word, you know, to show ourselves approved unto God. The Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God as a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Let me um let me speak a little bit on what you was talking about with the parents, right? Mm-hmm. It says in verse 30 that because they said he had an unclean spirit, there came his brother, right? Mm-hmm. There came his brother and his mother, his brethren and his mother, his brothers and his mother, and standing without sent unto him calling him, right? Mm-hmm. And then they went and said, yo, they calling you because think about it. His mom was like, yo, they talking about him like this. They, they already know that stoning is coming next. So they're trying to protect him. But he looked around. He said, I'm going to continue to do this work. So he was, remember, the Bible says that Jesus was faithful unto death. So he, he continued to do work. Not that he disrespected him. So dis- we, yeah. we, we ought to look at the perspective of our parents trying to protect us. Right. Because you know that's usually what they're doing. They're not, they're not trying to really stop you. Who's really against you? Like, yo, I'm really violent. You know, nine times out of ten, people are not doing that. Right. You know what so I'm saying? Having that understanding will, will help you. Yep, and all you get and get understanding. Right. Amen. Or um, deal with that situation mm-hmm. a lot more lighter. Right. As opposed to being, you know, very authoritative or strong. Right. Or disrespectful. Being strong in your own righteousness instead right. of in, in God's righteousness. Right. He like God will never lead you to do anything outside of the law or the Holy Scriptures. Right. He'll never, he'll never say, you know, I want you to steal this because, um, because you're hungry. He'll, he'll never say that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A lot of people would disagree with that, but he'll never um, make you break a law, you know, um, as far as like God is all powerful. So he can, he can, he, he, he made manna come from heaven for the children of Israel, right? The ravens uh, fed fed the men of God. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in in modern day time, you think God can't do something even greater? You know what I mean? Miracle money in your account. You know what I'm saying? He can do anything. So he will not cause you to to break the law. And many people will argue with that, but that's that's my stance, and that's what I see um, throughout my my years of living and my studies. So if anybody have anything. Else, you know, let me know. Give me some clarity, cause I don't, I don't sit here and think that I, I know it all. But I say from my experience, from what I know, from my relationship with God, I can show you in the Word. Now, if you, if you feel like you know something different, then I'm open. My mind is always open to, to listen. Like, oh, okay, I get, I get where you're coming from. So that's, and that's humility. All right. This is the last question of the night. Go ahead. What's clarity? You knew it was a question. <laughs> What's clarity? Why does it matter? Clarity means clear. I, I want to be clear. I want to understand something. That's what clarity means. Stop rubbing your eyes. You rubbing your eyes because you're tired. It's almost over. Go for it. All of us special, that means nobody special? Okay, we can ride with that. And God is special. And God is special, okay. So nobody's special but God then. Right, amen. All right, y'all. Time is well spent. I'm, I'm surprised that y'all stayed up here this long. I appreciate you guys. Uh, the word is good. We love you guys. With the love of God, rest well. Your mind is at ease. God has spoken. Be healed. Be restored to your families. Um, Show love and um, keep on praising God, y'all. We love you. You be blessed. Shalom. Shalom.